It's the biggest weekend for Canadian musicians, the Juno Awards, and we are live from London, Ontario, where they will be handed out over the next couple of days. The festive thing to kick it off this weekend is the Juno Cup, and it's where rock stars take on former NHLers and Olympians. And by former NHLers, I mean like Doug Gilmore and Olympian, Natalie Spooner and musicians, Jim Cuddy, who happens to be joining me here, hey. and my best friend. Hey, Jim. How's hey, it going? Lindsay. So we're hearing a lot of trash talk on social media from musicians to the NHL players and Natalie Spooner. How have you been preparing for this matchup tonight? Well, I'm wise enough to know to be quiet because <laughs> I recognize, you know, this. So around Tuesday of this week every year, I start to get a pit in my stomach because I know it's a whole heap of humiliation coming coming up. So I just uh, I look forward to it being over. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the last, sorry to bring this up, the last 15 of the 16 years, or 15 of the 16 years, you guys have lost. So how does the roster the compare? You said that. <laughs> you said that. How does the roster compare to years previous? Okay, well, let's just, let's just go. Last year, we lost in overtime. And overtime, the overtime format we were formed at the time was three on three. Now, does that seem fair to the musicians? No. I know you were going to say no. Um, so we were a little shocked at that, and we only lost in the, very little, little, the last 30 seconds. So that was pretty close. We have some good players, and the NHL, is, if we can just keep them, keep the governor on them at, so they're at about 50%, 55%, then we have a chance. But they claim, and maybe they're right, and even now the, the, the women's national team girls are, are saying that if they don't ever want us to touch the puck, we'll never touch the puck. <laughs> and and Spooner said that she thought the score would be 15 to nine on cue yesterday. So that's a little that's a little much. So uh, we are motivated to to show up and try to do as well as we can. If we were to even come close, that is, I think, shame on them. We shouldn't come anywhere near them. So we have nothing to lose. The trash talk is phenomenal right now. I never <laughs> thought I'd hear you throw it out like that. But I do, there is a bit of a serious and emotional tone surrounding this game because for years previous, we've seen from Walk Off the Earth, you know, the beard guy. And he unfortunately passed away suddenly uh, in December. And you guys, I understand, are doing something to remember him this year. Yeah, and there'll be a little tribute. And also, his son Jackson is playing in the game. And his son Jackson is great. His son Jackson is, uh, I think, 15 or 16. And he's got all that, that gangly uh, uh, young boy, you know, movement. Uh, he's a good hockey player. And uh, so that'll be really fun. Um, but, yes, that was a shock. I mean, that that's every year... We lose some people from the musical community. This one hit very close to home because I had just talked to Mike about about playing. I'd seen him in the airport, and he was always the picture of health. I mean, that was one of his things, right? He was always tanned and beautiful. So I was I was dumbfounded that 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 happened. So um, it'll be it'll be a little sad, but he would want us to win. So that's what we'll try to do for Mike. Mike, I want to talk about the actual awards itself. You're a multiple Juno Award winner. There's 80 first-time nominees this year. What does a Juno nomination or win mean for an artist's career? I think it means a couple of things. I think it means recognition by your, your musical community, which I think is important just for your self-esteem and your confidence. And then it opens some doors. You know, you can forever tag that onto your name, and it helps with festivals, and it helps with people's general interest in you, helps you get gigs. And, uh, I mean, it's it's one day where or a weekend where there's a, there's a huge impact, and then there's a, a smaller but significant impact for the rest of your career. So I think it... You know, sometimes it gives people the little kick they need to stay in the business. That's very interesting. I never thought of that way, but, you know, I want to go back to the game quickly. I want to do some quick questions with you. Mm -hmm. What are the chances you drop the gloves, bring out the mitts, and fight Doug Gilmore? Oh, Gilmore would be no no problem. He's a, he's a snowflake. There would be nothing there. But they have Troy Crowder, and Troy Crowder would would would, would absolutely he would actually kill me. And so that so you can't do that. Um, uh, so you know, I'd go after if it was going to go after. I'd go after somebody with bad knees. Dennis Maruk has bad knees, oh and I'd go after what? It, it's, you got to be strategic about these things. So I go after Dennis. Um, I don't know how good the girls are at fighting. I'll bet Spooner looks strong, but I, I bet you I could take Sarah Nurse. <laughs> oh uh, real quickly, what do you think the chances are we make best friends bracelets this weekend? <laughs> you know what? Maybe? It is all amazing. So, yes, there will be a very high, 100% chance there will be some best friends. And can I call you Jimmy? 
Well, you, you can, you know, you've been, always been able. You don't even have to ask. You've always well, been able to do.